Shalom. Welcome to Shmoo's Views Toward Observant Judaism. I'm Shmuel Ben Shlomi, your host, and I'd like to thank you for watching this video. If you could, hit the subscribe button if you like what you're seeing. Uh, also, hit that notification bell so you can be informed of uh, new videos when they get posted here. And hit that uh, thumbs up button so that can help our algorithm to get the videos out to others as well. Also, if you uh, don't mind, I would appreciate it if you could leave any comments, uh, any thoughts of your own uh, in the comments section below. Also, uh, visit our website where you can uh, find all kinds of uh, teachings on uh, the weekly Parshas, on uh, news that affects uh, all Jews and Israel in particular. Uh, also, uh, Jewish teachings on other subjects not covered in the Parshas, and as well as Kabbalah and uh, just some random thoughts that uh, I have from time to time. And the uh, website, the link to that website will be posted in the, com uh, in the description of this video below. Today I want to talk about Pesach. As uh, this Shabbat we uh, are coming to the close of this year's Pesach, Passover. I hope you've had a wonderful Passover. So far, uh, here in the Shlomi household, we've had a wonderful, wonderful Passover. Uh, our Seder was just marvelous this year, and my, my wife, my beautiful wife, uh, Dina, really outdid herself, and uh, God's blessings upon her. And so it's hoping that you had a wonderful Seder, and as we finish up Pesach this weekend, uh, may God's uh, Hashem's blessing be upon all of you. Uh, as I said, I want to talk about Pesach, but also to remind you that when uh, Passover is completed, we will be starting a new six-part series teaching on uh, the journey of the Spirit, based upon the teachings of uh, not only the Torah, the writings, and the uh, prophets, but also uh, the Kabbalah. And it, it is literally, as it says, a journey of the Spirit. A journey of the soul. And so I hope you uh, tune in for that. It'll be in six parts beginning uh, very soon. Today, like I said, I want to talk to you about Pesach. And before I do, I would like to read from the Siddur, uh, from our morning prayers every morning. We read Exodus chapter 13, verses 1 through 16. And I'd like that to read that uh, to you now because that is the foundation for our celebration of Pesach, Passover. Adonai spoke to Moshe, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn whatsoever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and beast, is mine. And Moshe said to the people, Remember this day on which you came out of Mizraim, out of Egypt, and out of the house of bondage, for with a strong hand Adonai brought you out from here, and therefore you must not eat chametz. This day you are departing in the month of springtime, and it will be when Adonai will bring you to the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, which he swore to your fathers to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey. You shall perform this service in this month. Seven days you shall eat matzos, and on the seventh day there will be a festival dedicated to Adonai. Matzos shall be eaten during these seven days, and no chametz and no leaven shall be seen in your possession within all your boundaries. And you shall relate to your son on that day, saying, Because of this, Adonai acted on my behalf when I came out of Mizraim, and it shall be a sign upon your arm and a reminder between your eyes, so that Adonai's teaching will be the words of your mouth. For with a strong hand, Adonai brought you out of Egypt, out of Mizraim, and you shall keep this ordinance in its appointed time from year to year. And it will be when Adonai will bring you to the land of the Canaanites, as he swore unto you and to your fathers, and will have given it to you. Then you shall bring to Adonai every one that opens the womb, and every firstling that is dropped by cattle that belong to you. The males shall belong to Adonai. The firstling of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb, and if you do not redeem it, then you must kill it by breaking its neck. You must redeem every firstborn of man among your children. And it will be when your son asks you in future time, saying, What is this? You shall say to him, With a strong hand, Adonai brought us out of Mizraim, out of the house of bondage. And it was when Paro unyieldingly refused to let us go, that Adonai killed all the firstborn of the land of Mizraim, 
from the firstborn of man to the firstborn of beast. Therefore I sacrifice to Adonai all that opens the womb that are males, and every firstborn of my sons I redeem. And it shall be a sign upon your arm and for totophos between your eyes, for with a strong hand Adonai brought you out of Mizraim. Pesach is one of the most important festivals. It's one of my favorite because of what it reminds us of. But it's one of three festivals, uh, three holidays, if you will, in which we, as Jewish males, must appear before Adonai uh, in the Beit HaMikdosh three times a year. Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot. Uh, We'll be coming soon upon Shavuot. We've already begun counting the Omer, uh, which counts down to the day of Shavuot, a very important time in which God gives us his Torah from Mount Sinai. You know, I said we had to appear before Hashem three times a year to, at the Beit HaMikdosh in Yerushalayim, at the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. But we haven't had a temple for over, two, or almost 2,000 years now. So how is that possible? Well, it's not. It is not possible at this time. <clears throat> but why haven't we had a temple for 2,000 years? I think it's important to understand the reason behind that. Some people would say, you know, some of the nations and some of the people uh, in the nations say, well, where is their God? You know, their, their trust in Hashem means nothing because they haven't had a place together. They haven't had the presence of the Shekinah of Hashem in their presence for 2,000 years now. So therefore, the truth of what they're telling us must be a lie. It must not be the truth. Well, that is, there's nothing further from the truth than that statement. We have not had a temple in 2,000 years, and there's a reason for that. And the reason is because Hashem is with us wherever we go, and He wants us to know that. He is not located in just one location. He's not like the gods and the idols of the peoples. They were territorial gods. They were gods that would be found only in certain areas. But God, Hashem, Adonai, yod heh vav heh is the creator of all that is and is not. He created the universe, the sea, and the earth, and all that is in them. He is not relegated to one area only. Hashem is with us wherever we are. And for 2,000 years, he's made that very clear. Wherever we are, wherever our feet trod, wherever we are in the diaspora, Hashem is with us. It would be good, and I look forward to the day that HaMashiach comes and we rebuild the Beit HaMikdash and the Shekinah of God comes down into the Kodesh HaKodeshim upon the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant and makes his presence known to all the world by, number one, bringing all of us back to Eretz Yisrael. I look forward to that time. But, beloved, know this. Hashem is with us wherever we are. Just as he was with Yaakov, the promise he gave to our father Jacob, that wherever you are, I am with you. Wherever you go, I will be with you. Well, Hashem is with us, temple or no temple. And that's why we haven't had a temple for 2,000 years. Because Hashem must, must imprint upon us. And he has been doing so for two millennia. That he's with us no matter what. We didn't quite get that lesson when we were in the diaspora in in Babylonia for 70 years. But we've got it now. We know now. And we yearn for the day when the Beit HaMikdosh will be, be rebuilt. But this time, we will not fall into believing that Hashem can only be with us there. Hashem is with us wherever we are. The importance of Pesach the first of the, of the festivals of the Lord. 
was number one, he set us apart separated us from all the other peoples. He brought us out of Mizraim, out of Egypt, and separated us unto himself. Before this time, he had separated Abraham. He had separated Yitzhak. He had separated Yaakov. He had separated Yosef. He had separated his other 11 sons, Jacob's other 11 sons. But this time, he has separated an entire people, us, the Jewish people, separated us unto himself. And he did so with a lot of pomp and circumstance. He did so with great miracles, the ten plagues. He made himself known not only to the Jewish people, but to the Egyptians and to all the nations surrounding Israel at that time. The Torah says that the fear of Adonai when they saw what he had done to the greatest empire that was existing at the time and to the gods of that empire, the false gods of that empire, the idols of that empire, when these nations, the Philistines, when these nations of the Canaanites and the Jebusites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Girgashites, when they saw what Hashem had done to those false gods, the most powerful gods existing at the time in their minds. Fear fell upon them because they knew they were dealing with the real God of all creation and that he had chosen these people to be his. That's why he warned them, do not touch my beloved. Do not touch my prophets. That is the first important thing to remember about Pesach. Hashem divided us from the rest of the nations. And the rest of the nations witnessed that dividing, not only of the Red Sea, the Sea of Reeds, but of a people as well from the rest of the world. And then we have the, the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread. What is the importance of that? Well, unleavened bread represents the bread of life. And we, seven being the full number of completion, when we eat the unleavened bread, the matzos, for seven days, we're letting the world know that our lives are complete in Hashem, that we need no other substance, no other sustenance. Hashem is our life. And we witness to the world in those seven days that Hashem, and only Hashem sustains us. We need nothing else. We need no one else. We need no other false gods. We have the one true God, Hashem, yod Hey vav Hey. Like I said, we be, have already begun counting the Omer, and the reason we count the Omer is to make amends, to make preparation for the receiving of the Torah on the day of Shavuot, uh, the uh, foot of Mount Sinai, when God, we heard God with our own ears. We saw the magnificence of God with our own eyes. And we heard the booming voice of God as he proclaimed his commandments and separated us, not only as a people, but this time as a nation. For the first time in our entire lives, we became a nation dedicated, separated for Hashem. Israel, do not lose sight of the fact that we have a purpose. We have been separated for Hashem. We have been put here to repair the world, to bring the word of Hashem to the entire world, to do mitzvot, good deeds, obedience to the Torah, study of Torah, which outdoes them all so that the world can be repaired and be made ready for the coming of Mashiach. That is why Pesach is so important. It is the first of the three pilgrimage holidays to where we appear before Hashem. And when the Beit HaMikdosh is rebuilt again, all Jews will once again appear before Hashem 
at the Beit HaMikdosh to bring our offerings unto him. I look forward to that time. But until then, we have a duty to perform. We have a love act to do. And that is to study Torah, to be obedient to Torah, to love Hashem, His commandments, to follow Him, and repair the world. Until then, God bless you, Baruch Hashem, and we'll see you again.